coming from both management and board. So I see it as a, as a joint effort and bringing it together. Let me comment on, on board financial participation. In, uh, and Jeff and I chatted about this earlier today. Um, if you're in the, in the corporate world, you are required to own shares in the company of where you sit on the board. Why? For the simple reason that you're, rep you're there to represent the owners of the business. How can you rep some represent somebody if you're not one of them? You have to be. So you have to have shares in the company if you sit on the board. How can you sit on the board of a not-for-profit and not be a stakeholder? And the easiest way to make you a stakeholder is write a check. Now, it may well be that you're an artist and your check is $200. That's fine. But you write a check. And the other thing is people that are generous, and the name that we all see today, of course, is Judy and Will Matthews. But let me tell you, they are passionate about what they do with their money. And, and the wonderful thing they're doing uh, down underneath the gardener was, it was their brainchild. I mean, they created this. And they took it to the mayor. And the mayor was very excited, and he has driven it through City Hall. So, you know, people today don't just write checks and say, gee, I hope that works. They want to look, they want to see what the project <coughs> is, and they, they, they want to feel they're part of something. You know, they've worked hard for the money, they've done something, they've taken risks, it's worked, they've accumulated some wealth, they want to see it do something. And that doesn't mean, here, take my money, go do what you want. The government does that to us already, so <laughs> they, they, they really do want to. And, and that's why, you know, I'll say candidly, I got Judy Matthews on the board of Artscape five years ago, and, and she has been phenomenal. And it takes time. Any of you that are working with people with money, it's a long, slow road. There's a wonderful line. If you want money, ask for advice. If you want advice, ask for money. So, you know, you've got to build the relationship over time to the point that they trust you, and then they'll support you financially in what you're trying to create. I would also say, just, just riffing off that a bit, uh, the number one, last year as part of saving the TSO, I did 220 pitches to donors. <laughs> <laughs> and that sounds like an exact, it was 220. No, I believe you. And the number one question asked by those people, well, beyond to what end, what are you going to do next? You can't just go hand out and say, write me a check without having a plan, as further to your point, is are all your board members contributing and what's the average board gift? Wow. Which I tell you, philanthropists will set their expectations based on that. So running a large institution, one has to be considerate of that. And frankly, if all of your board members are not giving, and you're asking someone for a donation, they say, well, why, why aren't they giving? Why aren't they making a contribution? And, and if the average gift is very low, why should I be asked to give 10 times, 5 times, 2 times what the average board member is giving? So that's where you get caught in a trap. I, you know, if economics weren't relevant, if we weren't paying artists, if we didn't have aspirations to grow as institutions, we wouldn't need to think this way, but to grow an institution, one does. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Aziza. How hey. are you? <laughs> How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm really good. Uh, you're not going to like my questions. <laughs> no, um, these, are, these are really, really great points about the need for board members to be invested and to be financially invested. But um, as Jeff mentioned earlier, uh, the diversity of our city is not represented on these boards or in the leadership of our or arts organizations. And uh, the different communities within our city, be them um, artistic communities or otherwise, uh, should have a say in the governance of our arts organizations. You're shaping our country. So when, when you really want all of your board members to contribute financially, doesn't that create kind of an insurmountable hurdle for some of these voices to join? No, 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 no. We didn't say the, the amount. We didn't say the amount. We said they have to contribute. No, you didn't say the amount. But Jeff uh, I would say, implied I'd like the amount. amount. <laughs> well, well, J Jeff said an average amount. I'll, I'll let, let me help him out that way. But yeah, we, we want money. And, and there's lots of money available amongst all the voices in this community. Pick any ethnic group, there's lots of money there. 
I would say part of the challenge too in the arts is there was a study done, it's, it's, this is four year old data, but in 2011, Torontonians gave $11 billion to charity, and that's everything from sponsoring your friend's run to naming a wing of a hospital. And of that 11 billion, it was 120 million went to the arts. So we're at about 1% of people's charitable prioritization. And for us to really, again, be the creative economy, compete with New York, compete with LA, compete with Chicago, compete with other cities like Pittsburgh and Philadelphia that often and routinely kick our you know what's artistically, we do need people to step up at a higher level. I, don't, I agree with Robert in that the notion that uh, cultural diversity cannot be tied to a board contribution is a bit, uh, is a bit off.